G'day guys, welcome to Yuna Beauty. My name is Tanya and I'm your personal little guinea pig and we're going to do something a little bit different today. So I'm not going to be talking about beauty at all. Well, probably not going to be talking about beauty at all. Today I'm just going to be talking to you about all the glass house candles that I've tried so far, which to be fair is only, I think it's, I think it's only five. But anyway, that doesn't matter. And the books that I have read so far in January 2022. So, um... Looking forward to having a bit of a chat. Now, I couldn't figure out what we talk about first, whether we talk about the candles, because, I mean, some of you might only be here for the candles, some of you might only be here for the books, and then some of you might be here just to support me, and if that's you, then mwah, thank you very, very much. I love support, no matter how much it is, and um, you know what? I reckon we'll just crack into the video and see where we go. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys. Alright, you know what? You're probably here for the candles. I reckon you're here for the candles, right? I mean, we all love a good candle, don't we? I do. Anyway, I want to talk to you about glass house candles. Um, I can only really talk to you about the soy melt ones, the soy wax ones. Um, they used to be... Oh, what did they used to make them out of? It was something else. And apparently those candles had much better scent throw. I don't know. I've never had one of those ones. Um, but I do love glass house candles, and if they used to be better than what they are right now, then they must have been absolutely amazing, because I still think that these are pretty damn good. Anywho, um, the first glass house candle I ever uh, brought was a lemongrass one, and to be honest with you, I don't even know how I got onto glass house candles. It might have been because of something that I'd seen on YouTube, I'm not sure. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Now, I will say to you guys, if you do hear background noise, I do apologise, it's the weekend, I have kids, it is what it is. Um, but if you're not worried about that, then let's get stuck into it. So, this is the uh, lemongrass one that I had. It is called We Met in Saigon, or Saigon. So, I don't know how to say that, but I'm pretty sure it's We Met in Saigon. And these, mm, oh my gosh, so... I mean, it's lemongrass, it's lemongrass in a jar, what can I say? And I can tell you that the scent throw on this is amazing. I have an open plan kitchen dining, you know, lounge sort of thing. And um, it's, yeah, it's a pretty large area. And within about 15, 20 minutes, the whole room is smelling like this. This candle is amazing. I absolutely love it. I think the jars are cute. And um, yeah, I've got to say, I'll probably never stop buying this one. In saying that, there is another lemongrass candle that I absolutely love, and that is not made by Glass House. So, not all the candles that I want to talk to you about today are from Glass House, only four of the five are, and I want to talk to you about this one. Now, I apologise because this one's a little bit grubby, but this one is, I'm not even going to be able to pronounce this, I think it's Chiang Mai, and this bad boy I got from Spotlight. Um... It's by the brand called Sensia, and it is a lemongrass and ginger triple scented soy candle. And um, it just works. I don't even like ginger, guys. I don't like it in my food. I don't generally like to smell it, but it works. Like, it's not like bam, ginger in your face. It just has this way of enhancing that lemongrass smell. It is absolutely amazing. I generally pick this one up on special. This is typically, I think, uh, $27 for price. I think I usually pick it up between $12 and $16. This lasts a very, very long time. It is definitely worth it. They do have other scents. However, I've not tried them because <laughs> I like what I like, right? So this one, yeah, $27. Um, how big are you? It's a 60-hour candle. It's 450 grams, and this lasts me a very, very long time. Um, and these glass house ones. How big are you? These are 380 gram um, candles. Really? You tell me? Wow. So, well, that doesn't make any sense. This is 450 grams and this is 380. It does not look like it. I mean, okay, yeah, granted, this one is a little bit wider, but there you go. Um, so, <laughs> if you like lemongrass, see if you can get a hold of this one. It's definitely worth it. Um, and this uh, lemongrass glass house candle I think I paid $49 for it but either way I love them both um I love them both I really really do but if this one is on special then I'll always pick this one up 
over this one, but if I can't get this one, I'll definitely get this one, right? Anyway, let's move on to the next one. I have the next candle that I got into my collection. I still don't know how I got this one. I'm sure I brought these all myself. No, no, two of them. Oh, okay, so I'll get to that. I did buy this one myself. This one is called Bora Bora Bungalow. And um, it's a bit manky at the moment because I just burnt it. And then when I picked it up, you know, I got wax everywhere. But anyway, um, this is a cilantro and orange zest. And this does not, does not smell like um, coriander or cilantro or, um, or orange zest. This, this, I can't even explain it to you. Like it's, um, I mean, it's definitely got citrus in it. Yeah, but it's more like sherbet-y. You know, like those sherbet bombs. Um, uh, it is delicious, guys. It's amazing. The things that these candles do to my senses. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is beautiful. Yeah, look, it really does smell like some sort of sherbet lolly. I would probably say like an orange um, sherbet lolly. Uh, you definitely can't smell the um, cilantro coriander whatever um but this is my second favorite candle and this is the second candle that i ever got uh from glass house then um for christmas uh last year um a couple of months ago i got a uh certificate from my father-in-law for glass house actually it was for um oliver birch that sells glass house candles whatevs and so i decided to pick up some um limited edition ones and i picked up picked up two i have the pretty in pink marzipan and cherries candle and i have the year of the tiger camellia and lotus candle let's talk about the pretty in pink first so let me open it up for you because it's still tucked away in its pretty little box it's even still wrapped um i haven't burnt this one i can already smell it all right let's move this these guys are a little bit more expensive um so i think i paid 54 dollars maybe for these limited edition ones oh and look how pretty that jar is isn't it gorgeous? I will use these jars. I will not throw them out. I currently use one to hold, um, <laughs> I actually use one to hold my TV remote and my light remote in my bedroom because we've got the light bulbs that you can change with a little remote and I'm always losing them. Um, but you know, these are fantastic to use for like cotton sticks, cotton balls, makeup pads, um, bits and pieces, you know, that you have lying around. If you've got a bloke, you know, nuts, bolts, you name it. These these are gorgeous, they're very, very handy, they're very, very durable, and um, this smells great. I mean, I can't. It's it's taking me back to, like, um, my childhood. Like, do you remember you used to go down to the milk bar and you can buy, like, a bag of lollies? This one kind of reminds me of those um, red lollies, uh, sort of red lollies. Um, what are they called? Strawberries and cream um, lollies? I don't know, but this is, this is great. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I'm not the kind of person who has two or, well, uh, more than two candles burning at the one time, so I am looking forward to using this, but I'm not going to use it right now. I actually have two candles on the go at the moment, and that is my Bora Bora Bungalow, obviously, and my lemongrass one from, um spotlight uh so yeah i've got i've got a few right so i i can't wait to um burn this one and see how much i love it you know because sometimes it can smell different in a candle opposed to obviously when you burn it you know the scent throw or whether it's too sickly or whatever but in the jar i mean mm, yes and i mean the jar is so bloody gorgeous i mean look at that Anyway, let's move on to the next one. This is the Glass House Fragrance Year of the Tiger Cam Camellia and Lotus. And let's get this one out. Once again, I can smell it through the packaging. Whoop. Another beautiful jar too. I mean, it would be better, like it would have been awesome if it had the, uh, the tiger sort of print actually printed onto the jar, but you know what, I'm not mad. I still think this is cute, although it's going to have my fingerprints all over it by the time that I'm finished. Um, this will still look nice in somebody's bathroom or on a vanity or whatever, whatever. 
if you were into that sort of thing. Now, this, this one to me is more like a perfume. Definitely a little bit floral, but not, I don't know. See, I don't typically like floral. Um, it can normally give me a headache, something that's too rosy or just really, really um, floral isn't normally my thing, but this, this is kind of gentle and clean and um, mm, even a little bit like powdery. I know that sounds bad here, I am explaining it as powdery. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like maybe a little bit musky, I'm not sure. Um, they have so many layers, these candles, it's, but I love it. It, de it definitely it does smell expensive, like a, um, a very high-end perfume, but not so much that it's giving me a headache. I mean, if anyone knows me well enough to know me that uh, I generally get really, really bad headaches uh, with strong perfumes or even um, cheap and nasty perfumes. But um, yeah, this one, this one doesn't hurt my head. This one doesn't hurt my sinuses. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, it is more of a florally scent. And I typically go for um, either sort of fruity or um, citrusy. I guess that's fruity, isn't it? Um, <laughs> more citrusy, more limey, more zesty. Um, but I think this one's going to be nice. I think this one's going to be gorgeous. I'd love to burn this when I have some visitors over. Um, yeah, I reckon it's absolutely stunning. And they are the candles that I currently have in my collection. Uh, I absolutely love them. There are so many more that I want to get. The one that I really, really wanted to get um, is, oh, what is it? It's a, it's a mocha scented one. I would love that. But look, I, <laughs> I live in a small town and this small town doesn't always get every single limited edition candle that is uh, currently available. Um, unless I actually purchase it from Glasshouse website itself. And sometimes I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to spend over a hundred dollars to get free postage and I just think postage is a massive waste. So generally I won't order anything if I have to pay postage uh, unless I'm already committed to spending that amount of money anyway. So there's that. But there is so many. They've even brought out a new one. I can't even remember what it is, but I'll put it up here for you. Um, I was interested in having a look at that. But then they also have these other ones. Like they have a Lamington one. Um, Oh my gosh, they have uh, all the red things. It's supposed to smell like red lollies and stuff like that. But then again, this kind of smells like red lollies too. So, But I would probably attribute the other one to more like um, red snakes or like even, um, what's it called? Red skins. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love, 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 love eating red skins. Except for the part where it's all chewy and it gets stuck in your teeth. But anyway, I digress. You know what? I love glasshouse candles. Um, I really, really do. And I wish I could have smelt them um, or experienced them when they were that uh, made out of that other stuff. Uh, the other wax. Man, I just don't remember what the wax was. But anyway, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to explore some more scents. And, um, but you know what? If there's another brand out there that you guys reckon is better than glasshouse, hit me up because I'm always interested in new scents. I gotta be real with you, um, because my uh, sinuses are so fussy, there's a big chunk of glasshouse candles I can't actually own. Um, I mean, before the um, limited edition ones that I picked up, Bora Bora Bungalow and um, We Met in Sega on the Lemongrass one and the Orange Zest and Cilantro one, they were the only two out of the entire... Um, uh, what do you call it, regular stock that I could actually tolerate. And I think there was probably about another 10, maybe even 12 candles um, that are pumped out regularly that I actually can't use myself. Um, like there is this one called Taha Affair or something and it's supposed to smell like caramel. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. But you know what? People love the shit out of that one. And that's great. You know, we are all different. And <laughs> But I just can't stand it. And it, it hurts me so bad. Um, but yeah, I'm always interested in finding new candle uh, companies and exploring new candle companies. So, And um, if you do have that mocha one, tell me, is it any good? What about the scent throw? That's what I want to know about. Because if it's really good, then I'll put some money aside and I'll see if I can get it before it's out of stock. Hmm. Yeah. I'd be interested to know about that Lamington one too. Anyway, let's move on to the books. So um, I really started getting into wanting to read books towards the end of 2021 again. 
I go through these phases and I'm hoping to turn it into a regular thing instead of just a phase. So every year or so, a couple of years will go by, I just I just want to read, like cluster read, like give me everything to read. And, um, and then it would die off. Um, but at the end of last year, I had this obsession. I needed to read a book. Um, and yeah, since then, I've picked up um, five books. And um, without spoiling it, I will tell you what I feel about them right now. So let's go. All right, so the first book that I'm going to talk to you about, I actually physically have it. Um, and that is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I picked this up from Big W um, <laughs> really cheaply, actually. I think I paid $7. Was it $7? It was either 7 or 12 Why am I so conflicted about the two prices? It doesn't matter. It was still cheap. It was probably 12. <laughs> anyway, um, this was a really easy read. I read this in two days. Um, I'm sure you could probably read this faster if you're a better reader than me. It has 300 and something pages in it. Yeah, about about 320 pages. This is a um, this is a lovely story. Uh, so here's the thing. So I prefer books that have a good amount of spice in it, right? Um, typically, I would read um, historical romances. You know, you know the ones that have got like, I don't know, the the bad boy in it, the arsehole, and you know the female is this um, headstrong kind of thing, and they have this love hate relationship. Blah blah blah. They're the kind of books that I typically used to read, and I've just discovered that reading's completely changed now. Some of the most taboo, um, I guess, kinks. Um, that are around are now in books and people are reading about them and they're talking about them publicly and it's just it's amazing so when I picked this up I did have an expectation of kink um, you know something just a little bit more than you would normally see in a book and I gotta say yeah I was a little bit disappointed there this is really vanilla um, this is what I expected in sort of like a romance book and that's okay um, I just I just expected a little bit more in the spice department for me this this is a two um, and I know that's really really low but my expectations were really high people were bragging about this book it was even all over book talk um, on TikTok and um, yeah look it's written really well lovely story it's just I needed more <laughs> let's move on the next book that I picked up also expecting a good amount of spice is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. This was so hard for me. Very early in the book, I wanted to put this down. Um, it pissed me off. And I mean, it pissed me off. <sighs> there was just some traits about some of the main characters in this book that I found very difficult, um, very triggering, and um, I almost just didn't want to give it a chance. But I pushed through and I'm glad I did. I love the storyline, the character building of this book. Now, if we're going to talk about spice, it had definitely more spice in it than Ugly Love, but it still wasn't at the level that I would like, and I think it could have been a lot more than it was. I would put this at probably hmm, two and a half, three, um, yeah, out of five. Um, on a spice level, but I really really did enjoy this book um, and Yeah, I, I am glad that I picked it up. I am glad that I pushed through the author did um, Say in the back of the book that there was a possibility that people would be um, You know hesitant about reading on she knew that um, I didn't know this until after I read the book and then I, I read the end bit um, So I am glad that I did push through but yeah, there is that the next book that I picked up was called The Games We Play, which I'm going to put here because I actually have it um, on my reading device, uh, which is a Kindle. And um, I expected a lot from this. I expected a lot. And I'm sorry, but I am going to shit on this book. Um, people were talking to me that, about this book being so spicy. It's like you, you, People were saying they brought the hardcover book. They brought the um, the uh, written, uh, like, you know, mm, downloadable book, and they also brought the audio book because that's how much they loved this book. And when I read it, I thought to myself, what the fuck? So if you've ever watched 
porn, um, you would know that there are some that start off with, you know, a woman walking into a house with one or two blokes and she sits on the couch and they, they, they give this little storyline before they get down and dirty, right? That's what I felt about this book. I felt like they rushed the character building in the beginning just so they could uh, throw all the spice at you. And I think that's where they lost me. I mean, I did read this book all the way through, don't get me wrong. Um, the spice is there, but it's lazy, if you ask me. It was really, really lazy. This book had so much potential. If it had had another one to 200 pages, this book could have been freaking amazing. It could have been amazing. They had a very good idea of a story and they, they just didn't build it enough. They didn't... They focused more about the um, the kinks, I guess, um, than they did the character building and the storyline. And even even the kinks were, you know, like they were okay, but <laughs> I don't know. They just they weren't enough. So um, I was yeah, I was pretty damn disappointed in this book. Um, but that's okay. It just because it's not my thing doesn't mean that it's not yours. But just keep in mind, you know, it's 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 a little bit like a cheap porn, if you ask me. Um, and yeah, it could, it could have been, it could have been amazing. And that brings us to the last book that I have completed in January 2022. And that is this bad boy right here, Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins. Now this is exactly what I was expecting. Now, it's not the typical genre that I have read before. This is fantasy based, this is creatures, monsters, I guess, uh, werewolves, uh, witches, you know, mythical. Um, most of the books that I've read uh, before are realistic, you know, um, humans. <laughs> uh, not this, uh, but it is amazing. I'm not going to be able to do it justice. This book is amazing. By page 10, it was already better in the storyline, the character building, and the spice than those last books that I just mentioned. She just knows how to write. This woman is amazing. Her stories are amazing. And I am currently now on book two. This is um, book one out of, I think she's got four. She just brought another one out too, so... Um, exciting. This has got kink. This is kink all over. However, it does have trigger warnings. Um, there are some things that might upset you in it. So definitely check out the trigger warnings to make sure that you're not going to be affected by this. Um, I've not been affected by anything in this. I think it's amazing. It reminds me of the um, TV series, which obviously was also a book once upon a time, True Blood. But this... This could be better. This could be better. And I'm a vampire lover, so True Blood, for me to be able to say that this could be better than True Blood, oof. Or I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Eric, oof. Where were you tonight around 11 o'clock? Here, with the better. Doing this? For the last six hours? You seem surprised. And then there's Lafayette. Bitch, you come in my house, you gonna eat my food the way I fucking make it! Do you understand me? Tip your waitress. But the characters in this too? Oh my gosh, the burn. Ah, ha, ha. Guys, this book, it's amazing. If you think that you might enjoy sort of a mythical style book with a lot of spice, I mean five star spice, <laughs> give this book a go. Um, I'm on book two and so far I'm enjoying that as well. So. What else can I say? This book is amazing. Go and try it for yourself. If you don't like it, well, then I'll be damned. I don't know. Then you're not my people. I'm joking. I'm joking. We all like different things. But no, this, I absolutely love it. I can't, I can't promote it any more than I already have. I mean, it's just perfect. Right up my alley. Um, anyway, guys, look, that's really all I've got to say today. Um, if you enjoyed this, fantastic. I do hope to catch you in my next video, which will be very, very soon. And uh, until then, take care of yourself. Bye.